is a false god, a false god, a false god. Allah is a false god, a false, false god. Allah is a false god, a false god, a false god. Allah is a false god, a false, false god. And Muhammad is not a prophet. Muhammad is not a prophet. If you want grace and mercy and love, Islam is not for you. But Jesus is the way, the truth, the way, the truth and the life. Jesus is the King of kings who died to save us all. If you just repent and believe he took your sins on the cross, then mercy and grace, forgiveness and love, eternity can be yours. But Allah is a false god, a false god, a false god. Allah is a false god, a false, false god. If you want grace and mercy and love, Islam is not for you. But Jesus is the way, the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the King of kings who died to save us all. If you just repent and believe he took your sins on the cross, then mercy and grace, forgiveness and love, eternity can be yours. Hallelujah. Let Lord Jesus Christ shine forth. Good evening or good afternoon wherever you are joining us. Welcome to another live stream with DCCI Ministries. And tonight I do have daughter of Christ on the line and we will be talking about some of the disturbing things um, religion of pieces teaches. But before I say hi to daughter of Christ and before I kind of get on with the topic, um, can I just gently encourage those of you who are joining us in the chat? Um, so title of tonight's title of topic of tonight's um live stream is about how Islam allows men to have a sex with a boy and then have a discussion if the uh, man should marry his wife or not. So we will be looking at Surah 4 verse 23. As we have this uh, discussion going on, can I just gently encourage those of you who are in chat, please, please, for us to have a healthy discussion, keep your comments, rebuttals, everything on the topic. Freedom of speech is very much encouraged, but that does not mean uh, you can spam, you can just change the topic whenever you want. There is a team, uh, there is a topic is going around, please, please do engage with it. We don't want to block you, uh, but don't push yourself to be blocked or timed out. That's not very good experiences at all. And I'll just kindly uh, ask those of you who who is English is second language or who speaks another language than English, please keep your comments in English. And also, um, it's helpful um, for safety of every individual. Please, please, in the chat, don't use the chat to share anyone's personal information or ask people personal questions. Um, intentionally or non-intentionally, you might be putting in the individuals in the danger with the response you get. Please do be aware of that. Um, so with those all basic principles, with all those basic principles, also let me just say um, quick hi to, um, sorry, quick hi to all my um, admins. Um, and which thank you, thanks for um, helping us and keeping uh, the chat in order. And also, let me say um, hi to daughter of Christ. Peace of Christ be with you, sister. Hello, lovely lady. Peace oh. of Christ be with you. Are you okay? I'm okay. Yes. Uh, okay. You would usually you'd usually call me sister, or like now you <laughs> change the tone. 
<laughs> yes, you're lovely, my lovely sister, my lovely, lovely sister in Christ. Thank you for having me again. Uh, Always a pleasure to speak to you. Oh, well, you know, you are under the covenant. You have to turn up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love, I love to be uh, doing this uh, with you, sister. Uh, thank you for joining us, sister. Um, how have you been? How was your day? What have you been up to? Uh, my, uh, I've I've been well. I've been well. Uh, even though I I love being with you and everything, I've been dreading uh, speaking about this subject that we have here because of all the loveliness that's in the Arabic, that I will struggle to find the words and um, uh, will be embarrassed. But I'm glad you can't see me because I'll be going red and then you can't see. <laughs> oh, well, it doesn't matter what color we have. Um, Lord Jesus Christ still loves us, cares for us um yes. before we start um can i just just gently encourage the beloved ones in the chat um please please add in your prayer uh and remember in your prayer um we do have brothers and sisters in the body of christ who are not well um do pray for their for for healing or for the will of god in their life and in the loved ones um it would be good if you can make time and um pray about it when you have time and when you can pray about it so with that in mind with that in mind um let me just let me just turn to the book which has holes in narrative and ask a couple of basic questions regarding these holes nothing personal there are holes and then we want to ask basic questions about those holes but apparently as you noticed um all of the social media those videos are being taken down that's different topic so today we will be talking about surah 3 verse 23 and when we look at the islamic interpretation of this verse I don't want to be mean, but it will make you throw up. It will make you feel sick. All I can say is it is it is in the intention of for us to see actually what does Islam teaches. Once we know what Islam teaches, it makes it much easier to engage with the followers of Islam and preach them our glorious gospel. That is the purpose of all. Um, so that's like your, I don't know, I think age 25 limit conversation. Um, as I said, it's going to be nasty things we will be looking at, but it's in the intention that we will be using in our engagement with Muslims. And this topic I used a couple of years ago at Speakers Corner, and I was told it was, I was disgusting. <laughs> it's, it wasn't like Islam was disgusting, but it was, I was disgusting for bringing it up. And then I was told Arabic doesn't say that, but I have an awesome God who provide daughter of Christ for us. Um, and daughter of Christ translated Arabic for us. So now we know what does Arabic really say. And we know how Muslims, sheikhs, imams, Islamic da'wah gangs, apostate Islamic da'wah gangs, they all lie to one another. So with that in note, let me just take us to Surah 4, verse 23. And then we ask, first we read the verse, and then we kind of look at the background of it. Um, Daughter of Christ, have you got access to Surah 4, um, verse 24? Yeah, uh, 4, verse 23. I've got it here. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I, uh, I think I said 24, I meant 23. It's okay, it's, it's part of the same passage, but um, uh, I can see your screen. Shall we start with Aubrey? Uh, shall we start with Arabic? Okay, it says, حُرِّمَتْ عَلَيْكُمْ أُمَّهَاتُكُمْ وَبَنَاتُكُمْ وَأَخَوَاتُكُمْ وَعَمَّاتُكُمْ وَخَالَاتُكُمْ وَبَنَاتُ الْأَخِي وَبَنَاتُ الْأُخْتِ وَأُمَّهَاتُكُمْ الَّتِي أَرْضَعْنَكُمْ وَأَخَوَاتُكُمْ مِنَ الرَّضَاعَةِ وَأُمَّهَاتُ نِسَائِكُمْ وربائبكم التي في فجوركم من نسائكم التي دخلتم بهن فإن لم تكونوا دخلتم بهن فلا جناح عليكم وحلائل أبنائكم الذين من أصلابكم وأن تجمعوا بين الأختين إلا ما قد سلف إن الله كان غفورا رحيما. So that's the Arabic. It's quite a long verse. Yeah. 
so the English is uh, prohibited to you for marriage are your mothers, your daughters, your sisters, your father's sisters, your mother's sisters, your brother's daughters, your sister's daughters, your milk mothers who nursed you, your sisters through nursing, your wives mothers and your stepdaughters under your guard guardianship, born of your wives, unto whom you have gone in. But if you have not gone in unto them, there is no sin upon you. And also prohibited are the wives of your sons who are from your loins, and that you will take in marriage two sisters simultaneously, except for what has already occurred. Indeed, Allah is ever forgiving and merciful. So this Allah who is ever forgiving and merciful uh, expresses his forgiveness and his mercy by giving the rules to the Muslims what kind of people they can marry, to the man, what kind of woman they can marry. Okay, so you've got list of, please don't marry with your mother, don't marry with your mother's daughter, don't marry with your daughter, don't marry with your sister, all those kind of things. And last week we looked at Surah 25 verse 54, where we saw actually in Islam, you can marry with your daughter. Um, if the daughter... Uh, was born or the son child is born outside of the marriage covenant or outside of marriage contract um, so um, today we want to actually go through the list and then see who are those people you can marry and you cannot marry Dr. Yeah. Christ do you want to summarize the list once, for, once again for us it can be such a confusing sometimes. It, lots of lots of people in here. <laughs> yeah, it's a long list of people that basically your relatives that you can't marry, which is kind of obvious, but it's it's a, a list. It's like a ruling that you can't marry. Obviously, your mothers, your daughters, your sisters, your aunts, your nieces, whether it's from the brother side or the uh, sister side, your mothers uh, who have nursed you. So uh, in Arabia at the time, people used to nurse milk. They're called milk mothers. So you can't marry them and you can't marry sisters who have been nursed alongside you from the same mother. Uh, and also it says uh, your daughters who are stepdaughters. Yeah? So if you marry a woman and she already has daughters, shouldn't you shouldn't marry the stepdaughter. And you, obviously we know men can, can have more than one wife in Islam. So it says not don't marry two sisters. Don't have two sisters as co-wives. Um, and you also can't marry your daughter-in-law. Uh, and it says here, obviously, we know Muhammad married his daughter-in-law because uh, the son was his adopted son. So it adds the bit about um, it has to be your biological son. Yeah, it says from your loins, because we know Islam thinks that the baby come from the loin. So um, it says if, if your biological sons, if they marry do, do, uh, wives, you can't marry your daughter-in-law. So that's the, the list, sister. So that's the list. Um, yeah. Let, yeah. Um, let me just actually, I'm just going through um, checking the tafsir because I want to give you the background from the tafsir. Um, sorry, my keyboard is like letters are not... Um, letters on my keyboard is not working so just it take it it is taking a little bit longer than um i was expecting sorry it's okay <sighs> okay so let me let me share the screen with you so this is uh we are in quran.x Sorry, mm -hmm. QuranX.com, okay? And then we are in the Tafsir for Surah 4, verse 23, okay? So, um, I've let me just move this a bit around. So, I put the things on your screen. This is English translation, which is accessible to everyone. Mm -hmm. And we will be looking at the, actually focusing mainly in Arabic, what actually Arabic says. But I don't know if the author of Christ is able to see um, what I'm seeing on my screen. It takes 20 seconds for her to see. Um, if the author of Christ, are you able to see what I'm what I, what is on the screen? 
Yeah, this is uh, Maududi's tafsir. Yeah. So, uh, would uh, you mind would you mind reading from the second paragraph where it says experts have different as? Yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, experts have differed as to whether the woman with whom the father had has had illicit relations is also unlawful for the son or not. Some of the earlier jurists do not consider her unlawful, but some others not only consider her unlawful, but this, but for the son, for the son, but also the woman whom the father has touched lustfully with the hand. There has also been a difference of opinion as to whether the woman with whom the son has had an illicit relation is unlawful for the father, and whether the man with whom the mother or the daughter has had illicit relations become unlawful for both the mother and daughter. So, sorry, lots of mothers and daughters and fathers and sons. sons. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So basically talking about if people having illicit relations, whether the relatives then can marry or not. Um, there have been lengthy controversies concerning the legal niceties of this matter, but a little thinking will show that the existence of a wife who is also coveted by the husband's father or his son, or whose mother or daughter is also coveted by the husband himself, cannot bode well for a righteous society. Yeah, so the part I want to, uh, to get our attention is, mm -hmm. they are discussing, okay, the man with whom the mother or the daughter had sex, sexual relations becomes unlawful to both mother and the daughter, okay? Mm. And then mm. you got the same thing also for the son. But mm -hmm. some others not only consider her unlawful for the son, but mm. also from whom the father has touched lustfully. Mm -hmm. I find this like so much like amazing. It's like lots of, there are lots of um homosexual incline inclining towards homosexuality is all over there anyway so uh, this, sorry. it's very um it's very polite compared to the arabic sister as we will see later yeah uh, but, very polite but this is like as much as they can translate it to english yeah okay so that is the tafsir of surah 4 verse 23 but what we are gonna do is actually we will be looking at more tafsir which is like more recognized by muslims you know they are they can be cherry picking um like today they just don't like maudi you maudi you can't do much about it so what we will do is we will look at kurtubi and ibn katir yeah and don't get any more classical than that can't get any more authoritative than that. Yeah, so um, in terms of yeah, we do ask kind of basic questions and um, well detailed, well explained Quran kind of doesn't explain them that well. So therefore, we have to go to tough seers to get explanation for the well detailed, well explained Quran. So yeah. on the screen, I have the beginning of Al beginning of Kurtubi. We are looking at verse 4, chapter 4, verse 23. So, daughter of Christ. Yeah. If that's okay with you, can we first read the Arabic? Mm -hmm. And then we've got all the translation is already on the screen. Yeah. Um, and I want to get attention for those of you who are watching. Uh, what is happening? I want you to kind of give full attention to what is happening and how can this even be discussed? So they are discussing those issues. Is it acceptable? Is it not acceptable? Who can I sleep? Who can I marry? Can I sleep? Um, can I sleep with the son but marry with the mother? Those kind of like interesting conversations are taking place in the history of Islam. Yeah, and this stuff is online. If you can see the top, you can see the uh, website address. This is yeah. from Islamic website, Qurt Qurtubi 423. Uh, I'll read the Arabic verses, sister, like you said. وَاخْتَلَفُوا فِي الْوَطْئِ بِالزِّنَا هَلْ يَحْرُمْ أَمْ لَا فَقَالَ أَكْثَرُ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ لَوْ أَصَابَ رَجُلْ إِمْرَأَ بِزِّنَا لَمْ يَحْرُمْ عَلَيْهِ نِكَاحَهَا بِذَلِكْ وَكَذَلِكْ لَا تَحْرُمْ عَلَيْهِ امْرَأَتُهُ إِذَا زَنَا بِأُمِّهَا أَوْ بِابْنَتِهَا وَحَسْبُهُ أَنْ يُقَامْ عَلَيْهِ الْحَدْ ثُمَّ يَدْخُلْ بِامْرَأَتِهِ ومن زنى بامرأة ثم أراد نكاح أمها أو ابنتها لم تحرم عليه بذلك وقالت طائفة تحرم عليه. So the English is 
uh, it's the di- the di- difference between the scholars. They differed on whether illegal sexual intercourse prohibits marriage or not. Most scholars of knowledge said if a man commits fornication with a woman, this does not prohibit him from marrying her. And similarly, he is not prohibited from his wife if he fornicated with her mother or her daughter. It is enough for him to take the legal punishment, uh, then he may have sex with his wife. And whoever fornicates with a woman, then desires to marry her mother or daughter, it is not prohibited for him to do so. And a group said it is prohibited. Go on, sister. I don't know what to say to this. Uh, It's amazing. So basically, the man can be planning to marry a woman. He can then have sex with the woman's mother or daughter. And that doesn't stop him from then going on to marry the, the the woman or the other way around he can he can have a wife and he can have sex with her daughter or her mother and carry and then carry on marry them later so in islam you can marry up to four or over four depend mm-hmm. what tradition you are going out if you are going with shabirali simply is like it not up to four, it is one, two, three, four, and then it goes on. If you are yeah. going with the more orthodox view, you can marry up to four wives. So that's not enough. Okay, that's not enough. You need to be very cherry, you need to be wise on choosing what kind of woman you want to get married. Okay, let's say you are in your 50s. Okay, and then you saw a woman who is in her 20s. You want to marry with her. Mm -hmm. But, so this is young 20 years old girl. Um, So you need to first win the heart of her mother. You start flirting with her mother. And then you have sex with her mother. And then you go back and marry this 20 years old. 20 years old girl. Yeah. Do you see there is a problem with that? Yeah, the man will, this man, let's say he did wrong with the mother. And then he can then marry the daughter. So he would have had both mother and daughter at, at some time, at some point. And he also is, can then, they could be living together. They, he, that, it could be the same household. So he will be in the same household where he was, with the wife, with the mom and the daughter, both of whom he was once attracted to and both of whom he once for, uh, fornicated with. Uh, uh, how is that How is that good for anyone? How is that right? It's not on, by the way, um, I don't want to be cherry picking in here, but when um, in the parentheses we use the word marriage, actually we are talking about nikah, not, yeah. like in the action of, Uh, sexual act marriage is kind of you make a contract for certain time or for lifelong Uh, the word is being used in Arabic is nikah that's just act of act of that sex it's just a sex in action okay because in marriage uh, you don't have to have sex 24-7 so in here I'm just struggling to understand an ideology which is supposed to rule all over the world yeah. comes as the last and best religion to humanity. They are simply discussing when you sleep with the child, when you sleep with the daughter, and that daughter could even be like five years old. Remember yeah. Surah 64 verse 5. That daughter even might be 12 years old. You you want to get married with the daughter. And there is a saying, I don't know if it's in English or not, but um, there is a saying, they say like, the way to the heart of man goes through his stomach. That means like you need to cook lovely foods so that um, that you kind of, Ex, um, express your love towards him and then he will love you back in here way to get way to have sex 
way to get married with this 12 years old girl first you first you have option of having sex with her mother even you can have sex with her mother after you marry the daughter it's terrible and i want people to notice most scholars even though there's a difference of opinion most of them say it's okay it's allowed um and my question to you sister is what if he had he had the daughter first let's say and outside of marriage and she had a child he then can go marry the mother and has another child from the mother i'm already discussed and ideology is discussing these issues and then most scholars come to the view yeah it is not it is not forbidden it is all right you can do so yeah get just get the lashings just get the punishment carry on put all of them together in one household with with all this history behind if anyone hasn't thrown up yet is the next slide please please get ready to throw up here's the next slide yeah mm. uh, would you like to read it yeah so this is uh, the rest of the same paragraph yeah uh, what is sahih in the statement of Malik and the people of Hejaz uh, sister, uh, sister sorry. in case you know like it oh. happens it happens the Arabic in case, <laughs> yeah in case like you are misrepresenting you know I'm yes. sure like whole Muslim world knows the Arabic and they are well versed on it. Yes. But um, it might be better if we look at Arabic first. Okay. Arabic says, وَالصَّحِيحِ مِنْ قَوْلِ مَالِكْ وَأَهْلِ الْحِجَازِ إِنَّ الزِّنَ لَا حُكْمَ لَهِ لِأَنَّ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى قَالْ وَأُمَّهَاتُ نِسَائِكُمْ وَلَيْسَتْ أَلَّتِي زَنَى بِهَا مِنْ أُمَّهَاتِ نِسَائِهِ وَلَبْنَتَهَا مِنْ رَبَائِبِهِ وَهُوَ قَوْلِ الشَّفَعِي وَبِي ثَوْر عن عائشة قالت سئل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن رجل زنى بامرأة فأراد أن يتزوجها أو ابنتها فقال لا يحرم الحرام الحلال وإنما يحرم ما كان بنكاح So it's saying what is authentic in the statement of Malik and the people of Hijaz The people of Hijaz are the people of the Arabian Peninsula Zina does not have a ruling so fornication does not have a ruling because Allah the Exalted said, the mothers of your wives are prohibited, not the mothers of those you fornicated with are prohibited, or their daughters. This is also the statement of Al-Shafi'i and Abi Thawr. Narrated Aisha, she said, the messenger was asked about a man who fornicated with a, with a woman and then desired to marry her or her daughter. So the messenger said, the haram, the fornication, does not prohibit the halal, which means marriage, only marriage prohibits. What do you think? I came home just before the live stream, so I didn't get a chance to get a bucket where I can <laughs> throw up on it. Um, so I did question. I did question um, this chronic verse a couple of years at Speaker's Corner. All yeah. I got was like I was disgusting. Just reading makes me disgusting. Can you imagine? Muslims have to live this. Can you imagine Islam teaches this? What that make Islam and Muslims? I wonder. Uh, and remember, this is the Sahih, um, what they call the authentic view. Yeah. This is the authentic view, and they are explaining it. They are justifying it, and even they're bringing something from Muhammad's Hadith to show that make the case that yes, this is okay. Uh, Malik, um, they've, they've mentioned Malik Shafi'i and Shafi'i. They're the two, one of the two biggest schools of thoughts in Islam. And I uh, wouldn't say I wouldn't say one of the two biggest. I would go uh, Hanafi is the biggest, but anyway. <laughs> so I'm um, just biased. Okay. okay. So yes, so one of two of the four main schools of thoughts of Islam, and it's saying, Allah says it's your mothers, the mothers of your wife, so your mothers-in-law are prohibited. He, they didn't say, oh, the mothers of those whom you fornicated with, which is basically the same. It's, it's, it's very, uh, it's wrong that they made that distinction um, because it's the same thing, isn't it? You're basically going to have people who have had both mother and daughter 
dif- at, at different times. This is just sickening system. Can you imagine? Um, of course, let's say those things are done behind the doors, and then you got married with the daughter or with the with the mother, and then on the wedding day or just preparation of the wedding, other other person finds out. Oh, this is the guy who I slept for five hours a couple of months ago. Yeah. How is that? How is that right? Um, any Muslim? Any? I don't know why the Muslims called you disgusting, sister. It's you. You didn't write this. Uh, I read this in Qurtubi. And why are why are the Muslim scholars sitting there discussing whether this is okay or not? In the first place, the mother of your wives are forbidden, not the mother of those who you fornicated with or their daughter. So you go and have sex outside of marriage, which is very Mm -hmm. common in Islam. Um, Even though Muslims like play this like perfect moral standard game. Actually, no, they do. They do lots of things. And actually, I remember there is a, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to share this, but um, there is a ex-Muslim sister. She learned, she learned Surah Fatiha from her Muslim father, because every time when father was having sex with her, he was reciting Surah Fatiha. A father was having sex because, like, she wasn't the biological, not bio, she was biological child, but not the like. It was the, her mother's like second marriage. Uh, so like she wasn't like kind of in that. Oh, she's circle. his. She's his. She's his stepdaughter. Yeah. And like she learned memorized Fatia in very very young age. Because like father was reciting that every time when he was having sex with her. That's like sickening, but anyway. This is heartbreaking. Uh, thanks God she's ex-Muslim now. So, the mother of your wives are forbidden, not the mother of those you fornicated with. Yeah. And or their daughters. Yeah. So, um, like you said, sister, they, the daughter can be any age. She could yeah. be a child. So... You're basically bringing the pedophile into the home, the, the household, because he can then marry the mother. So he always has a reason to be around the house. The haram does not forbid the halal. Yeah. Only mar- marriage forbids. See the wisdom behind it. Don't you just love like? Don't doesn't it make you kind of think how wonderful this religion of Islam? The haram because- doesn't. Pro- Prohibit the halal. So this doesn't this encourage people to do more haram? Because it's like a loophole. You can have both uh, women. If you are perverted enough to want a mother and her daughter, this encourages you to just let me do the haram. This allow the doesn't it doesn't prohibit the halal, and I will repent later or get the punishment, and carry on. Just wanted to bring attention to the what the Muhammad pieces and beliefs be upon him responds according to Aisha. Okay? okay. Yeah. People go and ask Muhammad, what what do you think about this? Can I marry with a mother of a girl who I just had a sex with? Or can I marry with a daughter of the woman who I had a sex when I was getting out the Costa Cafe? People go and discuss those things with Muhammad and then see the wisdom, like, look at the wisdom, like, that what makes your mind, like, I really, really want to become a Muslim. This is the moment, one of those moments that you really want to become a Muslim. Muhammad's response is, okay, see, it is very much similar, very much similar to Leviticus chapter 18, where you've got the, where you've got the laws who you can Mm -hmm. marry, who you cannot marry. You know that huge list? You can't marry with your daughter, you can't marry with this, you can't marry with this. Oh, no, I'm sorry, no. He doesn't go to the Leviticus. 
all he does think as, yeah, I am the prophet. I'll say something. It happens. See what how Muhammad responds to this. The messenger was asked about a man who fornicated with a woman, then desired to marry her or her daughter. I just had a sex with a woman who was 20 and she's got like six years old daughter. What do you think, Muhammad? What do you think, Muhammad? This is the wisdom. Like you need to be Einstein. You need to be Einstein to say, yep, this is the awesome. We can't even like it is better than what Shakespeare says. The haram does not forbid halal. It's amazing, sister. If you ask any um, regular Muslim, his response will be better than this. Yeah. And yet they think this is the best best of creation. They think Muhammad is the best. And look at his response. It's disgusting. And uh, Muhammad says that he he came to confirm the Torah. So, sister, you said Leviticus. For any Muslims here listening, Leviticus is uh, a book Leviticus in the Torah. 18, yeah. It says, uh, verse 9, you shall not uncover the nakedness of your sister, your father's daughter, or your mother's daughter, whether brought up in the family or in another home. Whether it's in the family or in another home. So you can't have your stepdaughter. Because the, God cares about the holiness in the home. It's not only that, like, this goes even under to, like, do not uncover your neighbor. Do, do not yeah. approach your neighbor. Do not approach, like, you know, Muhammad comes and then butchers all of Leviticus 18. And this is the man who comes to confirm and verify the Torah. Yeah. How can that be? So, nothing personal at this stage, okay? All I want to just bring to your attention, if you have not thrown up yet, okay? Let's continue continue with the next part of um, Kurtubi. When I say next, it's all in the same page, but we put them in the like nice slide so you can see the Arabic and you can see the English. So let's look at the next um, slide so that we don't misquote uh, Kurtubi, you know, we don't want to kind of take it out of context. Yeah, so I'll read the Arabic first, sister. Yes, please. يجوز الجمع بين الأختين بملك اليمين في الوط كما يجوز الجمع بينهما في في الملك واحتجوا بما روي عن عثمان في الأختين من ملك اليمين حرمتهما آية وأحللتهما آية عثمان ذكر أن عثمان بن عفان سئل عن الأختين من ملك ملكة اليمين فقال لا أمرك ولا أنهاك أحلتهما آية وحرمتهما آية So this is the first uh, paragraph. Uh, the translation is, it was said it is lawful to have two sisters simultaneously. So that it means you marry both sisters together. As what one's right hand possesses. That means if they are sex slaves, if they are Cap slaves, from the captive, yeah. captives from war, yeah. And to have sex with both of them, just as it is lawful to own both of them. And they back this up by what was narrated about Uthman regarding having two sisters as what one right hand, uh, one's right hand possesses, that he, Uthman, said this was prohibited by a verse and made lawful by another verse. So, Uthman, yeah. who, like, just don't, please don't think Uthman as someone who comes out of pink or out of blue. Uthman is one of the Sahaba. He's, yeah. He is <laughs> third caliph. He's the one who burns the orders burning of the Quran and then thinks like he's got all the authority, all those kind of things. This guy practices this. He, at the same time, have got two sisters. He's marrying with two sisters. Yeah, yeah. Again, sister, you say marrying. This is um, yeah, it's like, like a light word. Yeah, so they're basically his sex slaves, his captives. And imagine if he had two, two who are sisters, happen to be sisters. Can he have them both? Uthman says, I don't know, uh, because one verse allowed it, the verse that allows you to have sex with all your uh, captives, female captives, that's Surah 424. And the other verse that says 423, that says, no, you can't have two sisters together. That's why the man asked. So if you think about what happened to the Yazidis, what happened to the Christians in Iraq and in Syria under ISIS, yeah. Like, t imagine a little bit practical version of it, okay? This faithful Muslim who is so much fall in love with Muhammad. 
has a dinner date with two Christian sisters. Yeah. Two different tables. Probably, let's say he's like kind and thoughtful. He doesn't want to put them in the same time, same table. Two different, two dinner dates in the same restaurant. Tables are just next to each other. And then he can sleep with them. What does it say about the value, dignity of woman? What does it say about such a thing called self-control? What does it say about morality? What does it say about God who reveals that? What does it say about people who is willing to practice it? What does it say about the man who's supposed to be the mercy to the world? Encourages. Yes, I'm finding yeah. it's like double throwing up. And can you imagine what the sisters feel? Why do you think? Yeah. Why do, do you think seriously, daughter of Christ? Do you think their thoughts, like who cares? Do you think Allah does even bother about their thoughts? The man who is gonna sleep with them cares about their thoughts. Are they, they standards is much better than Allah? Yeah, I mean the man himself, he even asked even asking that question means he's perverted. And then Uthman, remember this is Uthman ibn Affan, one of the closest to Muhammad, and he's the person who Muhammad said he was shy. Do you remember? <laughs> he yeah, said he was so one shy. Of, really shy. He's he said, very shy. He's very shy. Very, very shy. He says, I don't know. One verse says yes, one verse says no. So uh sex slaves they don't have rights. So they can't say no. So the sister knows that this man is sexually assaulting her and then sexually assaulting her sister on another time. Can we can we move to the second part? I want to kind of get the attention on yeah. what people are saying. I do not co I do not command it. I do not forbid it. Just yeah. however suits you. You know, do whatever you, you wanna, like. Yeah, if you want a hot chocolate, get hot chocolate. If you want a coffee, get coffee. Whatever you yeah. wish. I am here to meet with your desires. How much lustful desires you have, please go ahead and mm. practice it. Yeah, so let's uh, carry on. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll carry on in Arabic first. فخرج السائل فلقي رجلا من أصحاب رسول الله قال أحسبه قال عليه. قال وما سأل سألت سألت عنه عثمان فأخبره بما سأله وبما أفتاه فقال له لكني أنهاك ولو كان لي عليك سبيل ثم فعلت لجعلتك نكالا وذكر الطحاوي ودرقاني عن علي وابن عباس مثل قول عثمان والآية التي أحلتهما قوله تعالى وأحل لكم ما وراء ذلك ولم يلتفت أحد من أئمة الفتوى إلى هذا القول لأنهم فهموا من تأويل كتاب الله خلافة ولا يجوز عليهم تحريف تأويل ومن قال ذلك من الصحاب الصحابة عمر وعلي وابن مسعود وعثمان وابن عباس وعمار وابن عمر وعائشة وابن زبير وهؤلاء أهل العلم بكتاب الله فمن خالفهم فهو متعسف في التأويل Sorry about the long uh, Arabic So remember this man has now left Uthman uh, because he didn't tell him which way So Uthman ibn, um, uh, he, So the person who asked he left and yeah. met another one of the companions uh, of the Messenger of Allah. He was said to be a a Ali, Ali, yeah. who said, I, I forbid it. And if I had power over you, I would punish you. But uh, Al-Tahawi and Al-Darqtani uh, narrated from Ali and Ibn Abbas that uh, what was similar to the view of Uthman, the verse that allowed it is uh, unlawful to you all others, verse 424. So none of the imams of fatwa paid attention to the latter view as they understood the opposite from Allah's book and one is not allowed to corrupt the interpretation. So this who, was cares said, what, who cares what Ali said? Yeah, so basically it's saying most people, um, they interpreted uh, the verse as you can have all women are fair game basically. Uh, verse 424, lawful to you all others. Uh, and they mentioned them na by name. The Omar, Ali, Ibn Mas'ud, Uthman, Ibn Abbas, Ammar, Ibn Omar, Aisha, and Ibn Zubayr. They said they are knowledgeable in Allah's book and they said it's okay. So whoever opposes them, you're being too strict. You're being exceedingly strict. You sh they sh it should be allowed. So, so that's what's happening. According to early Muslims, it is actually 
disappointing that this well-detailed, well-explained Quran doesn't like a word by word condemns it. It's like that's very much disappointing from well-detailed, well-explained Quran. But yeah. so when it says like early Sahaba is okay, Umar Ali ibn Masud, Uthman ibn Abbas, Amir um, ibn Umar, Aisha, yeah. ibn Al Zubair. They are the kind of the people we, we look up to. And then they simply say, yeah, there is nothing wrong for you to have sex with two sisters. Yeah. Yep. yep. If, you, if you own them, if they are captive sex slaves, why not? Why not? They've got nothing else to do. They are just there to see how much sex you want to have with them. Well, that's their job in Islam, the uh, captives of war, the female captives of war, the sex slave. Like Surah 424 says. That's a different, like, in somehow, like, you can kind of, you can get your mind to get used to that idea. But in here, two sisters for one man. That's just. Simultaneously, at the same time. So it's not like one died. Yeah, like, there is no, like, oh. any, like, there is a. There is no any value, there is no any dignity towards those sisters as a human being, as a woman. And also they've got, they're like family, can you imagine? Like, and, and sister, this is the best generation Muslims tell us. And look at what they're discussing with each other. Yeah, if the, the best of the best are telling us this. So if essentially this... it's like, keep away from Islam, run away from Islam as fast as you can imagine if muslims had this conversation today in speaker's corner on camera what would you think of them oh and when i when i tried to have this conversation i was told i was disgusting well this is the conversation that happened between Uthman and ali yeah. and aisha and zubair all the all their heroes were having this kind of conversation I, shall I, we have two sisters together i'm disappointed that aisha is in that list you know yeah. Like, she should be saying, like, oh, I am woman. I cannot talk about those. Oh, I cannot talk about this because I remember I was just a child when it happened to me. I don't have that much understanding of this. She joins in with the men and then have such a conversation. Aisha had lots of uh, disturbing conversation with men. She used to... Uh, in, in hadith, when you read, she explains to them how to have ghusl, you know, how to wash, you know, after sex and stuff. She's, but she's the mother of the believers, so. Keep away from Islam. Yeah, it's, it's just Keep disturbing. So, Ibn Katir. Yeah. That was Qurtubi. Yeah. I am sure Ibn Katir is going to say like, oh, it's all fine. Uh, yeah, so let's read the Arabic. Uh, سألت علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله عنه فقلت إن لي أختين مما ملكة يميني اتخذت إحداهما سرية فولدت لي أولادا ثم رغبت في الأخرى فما أصنع فقال علي تعتق التي كنت تطأ ثم تطأ الأخرى قلت فإن ناسا يقولون بل تزوجها ثم تطأ الأخرى فقال علي أرأيت إن طلقها زوجها أو مات عنها أليس ترجع, أليس ترجع إليك لأن تعتق تعتقها أسلم لك so a man came to uh, Ali to ask him a question. He says, uh, I asked Ali, uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib, may Allah be pleased with him, saying, there are two sisters, sisters among what my right hand possesses. I took one as an intimate companion and she bore me children. Now I desire the other sister. What shall I do? Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, said, set free the one you used to have intercourse with, then have intercourse with the other. So I said, but some people say marry the first and have intercourse with the other. So Ali said, do you see if her husband divorced her or died, does she not come back to you as a slave? Set her free, it is safer for you. So what do you think of this uh, conversation, sister? Wonderful. I really want to become a Muslim. Amazing, right? Yeah, yeah. It's incredible. Please, please. Again. Yeah, another reason, like just say the shahada, just another reason. Yeah, this should be on all the dawah stalls that are put, this, this kind of uh, lovely stories. 
again, like the conversation is happening between Muslims, the golden generation. Someone says, I have two captives, you know, sex, sex slaves, they're sisters. I, this one, he had one and she gave, she gave him children. He has children with one and he wants the other sister. And then Ali says, well, you can set one free and then, and then have the other one. Uh, and uh, and the, then he said, well, I had some other advice from people who said marry the first and just have the other, you know, as a, as a sex slave. So basically to marry as in to make it official with one and then just have the other on the side. But then Ali said, no, you know, if you set one free and if she marries and, and if she gets divorced or the husband dies, the custom was that, that that woman would return to the original owner, quote unquote. So he would then have both at the same time. So he says, that's safer for you. It's like a deal, yeah? Have uh, take, Buy one, get one free. You know, let's find a loophole where you can have both at the same time. Go on, sister. Um, I'm just going to move to the... I'm just going to move to the next part. Okay. Um, this is comes again from religion which supposed to be this comes from a religion which supposed to be for whole humanity and reign all over the world and bring peace and love yeah this is just uh, this um I'll read the Arabic, it's in the red. واختلف العلماء أيضا من هذا الباب في مسألة اللائط فقال مالك والشافعي وأبو حنيفة وأصحابهم لا يحرم النكاح باللواط Scholars disagreed also in this regard uh, regarding the one who commits homosexuality. Uh, Malik and al-Shafi'i and Abu Hanifa and their companions all said marriage is not forbidden after a, the homosexual act to a relative. So, here's my practical question. This question is nothing personal. In in Western part of the world, okay, when you say homo, someone is homosexual, all is in your mind is that, um, let's say, Muhammad is homosexual. All you are thinking is, all Muhammad does is Muhammad sleeps with Ahmed or Muhammad sleeps with Mustafa. Okay, that's like all in the Western mind. But in Muslim majority countries, in Islamic mind is, when you say someone is homosexual, that means like they do have sex, Muhammad has sex with Mustafa, but also Muhammad is married to a woman who makes babies for him. Yeah, and here it's saying he can be even be a relative of that yep. woman. He can be her son or her brother or her dad. So, let me just understand this. Sometimes like my brain just leaves me, you know, goes somewhere else before even I start yeah. thinking. Yeah. So, a man who is married, got a couple of babies, can simply have sex with his brother, or with his brother's son or his friend's son who they met in the at speaker's corner yeah according to malik maliki shafi and abu hanifa three out of the four schools of thought taught in islam the marriage is not is is still lawful even if it's a relative not just any any person in speaker's corner. He could be that woman's relative. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Did you read, did you read the second paragraph, Daughter of Christ? Yeah. So that's the second yeah. uh, view. The second view. Yeah. So can can we read that like sentence by sentence? Sometimes I struggle to understand. You know, because it's so wonderful. You know, when yeah. you see something is like so gorgeous, just like 
makes think, your I eyes think, blinded. I think you're, you're just shutting it out because it's so horrible. No, it's so uh, gorgeous. Come on, sister. <laughs> I, 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 this, like, can you see? I think this is the fourth or fifth page. All I am yeah. getting is like, should I say Shahada right now? Should I say Shahada right now? Yeah. And look how many scenarios, sick, perverted scenarios these scholars are going through. And they're saying they're going with the view that's sick and perverted. So if a boy played with, yeah, okay, it's not like playing hide and seek. No. Okay. It's not playing, oh, dog, come here, I will throw a ball for you. Or it's not playing chess. Okay. No. If a boy is played with sexually, sexually, his yeah. mother is forbidden to marry that man. Yeah. And the son is in the view um, of Ahmed ibn Hanbal. He said, if a man commits sex homosexuality with the son of his wife yeah. or with her father or her brother, his wife becomes unlawful for him. So people can simply have sex with sons of their wives. Yeah, and uh, if the that words happens, in yeah. If yeah. you see this boy, you know when they talk about this 80,000 non-bleeding boys in paradise? Yeah. Source comes from, those things are just like giving birth to those disgusting, disgusting and disgusting and disgusting issues. Yeah, and the, the word in Arabic, sister, is boy. Boy as in child. And see that if a boy is played with, so he has no, it's done to him. He has no, um, he's not the one who decided this, is what I'm trying to say. So this is done to him. 54 years old, um, old man yeah. is playing with, the bo with a boy. Yeah. Six years old boy. What kind of play is that? In England, you go to prison for such a play. Yeah. If it is girl, you seem to say, oh, he's trying to fondle her. What is, yeah, he, he, what is he doing to a boy? And from which part of the body? It's just like, I find it's very much disturbing. And then I'm seeing a, is that part of Islamic Dawatim or Muslim missionaries in the chat doesn't even engage with its sources. There is nothing wrong. There is nothing for you to answer the question. Are you aware what we are reading? And Yahya, yeah, you read Arabic. How are you still reading those things? And you're stuck in Islam with knowing. Actually, there is a potential person who might be having sex with his son. Or play with his son because son is apparently wouldn't be available for the child. Um, boy wouldn't be available for the sex. And remember, three out of the four schools of thought say it's okay to then have the mother of that child marry the, 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 the man and bring that, in today's terms, pedophile, into the home, the one who played with her son, with her little boy. Hmm. If a man commits homosexuality with a boy... If 54 years old man have sex with a boy, another reason keep away from Islam, seriously. And the boy later, later begets a daughter. Okay, this boy grown up and he, he become age 25 and then got a baby, married, got a baby, and then got a daughter. The man who had sex with this child is not allowed to marry that daughter because she is the daughter of whom he had a sexual intercourse with. So, he, uh, like, I'm not sure if people are, people are hearing so it it is not saying it is not saying 
54 years old man had a sex with a child. Therefore, that man should go to prison. That child should be protected all of his life. That child needs to go through the counseling, go through the healing process. His child was, he had already been destroyed. And then here's the list of the punishments can be given to the man. Did you, did you hear that part? None of us heard that part because that part is not there. The part they concern is in 10 years when this boy has a baby, the man who had sex with the, this boy, can he marry with that baby or not? That's the concern. Yeah, the, the, all this is a concern for the man who committed this crime for his uh, social life afterwards, for his marital life. Can he then marry this person or that person? Who cares who he can marry? Look what happened to the boy. It's just it's just horrible. And most of the scholars saying it's okay, he can marry. Bring Bring the perpetrator into the home so he can continue to abuse the child. And um, from a medical point of view, sister, scientific point of view, it's a man who does sexual things to uh, a boy and then does sexual things to his mother. You can you can spread a disease. It's just ugly. It's not about there are medical like if I can in, in a sense it makes sense to me that. You know, like Allah doesn't know basic biology. Allah doesn't know basic med medical things. Yeah. But there is no one who is concerning about that child. There is no one. There is no one who is concerning about the f baby that ch when the child grows up, he's going to make a baby. And then people are all concerned about this man who had a sex with the boy. Is he allowed to marry his child in the future. Yeah, it's perverted, sister. It's perverted. It's the perversions of Muslim scholars, and the perversion comes from the spirit of Islam, the spirit of perversion. Uh, they've got that same spirit, and they're sitting there discussing what should be done in these horrific, horrific situations. And they're saying, go ahead. The woman with whom the son has had a sec sexual relationship is unlawful for the father and whether the man with whom the mother or daughter has had sex becomes unlawful for both mother and the daughter. There have been discussions after discussions about this. But uh, why is Yahya talking about the Catholic Church? Because Yahya, Yahya is throwing up right now when he, because he's hearing those things. He's throwing up and he doesn't know, he doesn't know uh, how to answer those things. One of the things you do is, let me attack them. Because what I'm finding is this is so disgusting. This is so disgusting. I don't want to associate with this in any form or any shape. You're talking about the Catholic Church. Do you belong to the Catholic Church, Shiaia? You should be concerned with the religion you belong to. I thought your wife was Catholic, Catholic yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, sister, if, if somebody in the body of Christ or who calls themselves a Christian does something wrong, in the 20th first century or in the 20th century, like he was mentioning in the, no, I don't know, remember what dates he's mentioning, they go against scripture. Whereas here we're looking at rulings from Islam. This is your laws. This is not somebody in, in the 21st century committing a, a, a crime. This is your your rules, according to Maliki, Shafi'i, Abu Hanifa. Even um, Muhammad himself, there was a hadith about him saying, the haram doesn't prohibit the halal. That means you can do whatever haram you like and then come and marry the relatives. Why aren't you concerned with that? So, I am not looking at what people are doing. I am very much aware the world we live is very, very, very much broken. That's why. 
Like, answer to every question, answer to every problem is Lord Jesus Christ and our glorious gospel. Because world is very much broken. Hundreds of people, uh, I heard on my way to home, hundreds of people were just killed in Lebanon. Okay? Every day lots of people are dying. The world is broken. The world is broken. I am not looking at what these broken people are doing. I am not looking at what thought of Christ is doing. Therefore, let me live my life the way thought of Christ lives. I am not looking at, at the mirror and then I'm saying, oh, I'm going to improve these parts of my life. Human beings makes human beings sins. Therefore, we need sinless, perfect savior. We are looking at what the scripture is teaching, what the books which we say they have authority over us. Bible has supreme authority over me. Bible covers, crosses, discredits everything else. So therefore, all I am doing is I am looking at the teachings of Islam. It's supposed to be Quran and Muhammad. But well-detailed, well-explained Quran needs Muhammad's explanations and needs Muslim scholars to explain what is well-detailed, well-explained Quran is saying. And I am afraid your well-detailed, well-explained book screams out very disturbing, very much disturbing teachings. You can have sex with a son and then think about, oh, are you allowed to get married his daughter in the future? It's very, very disturbing, sister. Um, An ex-Muslim atheist went back to Islam and says, don't talk about my mom. That ex-Muslim who become a Muslim again probably is there making money or something. I wonder what Islam offered them. Probably Islam offered them someone else's private part. Yeah, because Islam is all about private parts. Um, but the private parts are not yours. Someone else's private yeah. part is becoming your full-time, your business. It's sickening, serious to that extent. Yeah. It was a very good point you made, sister, about um, Leviticus. Is that, and the Quran not being Sorry, detailed. Are, are you talking about the Leviticus which Muhammad comes and simply ignores? Or are you talking about Leviticus which Muhammad comes and then he practices what Canaanites exactly practiced and he encourages his followers to practice that? Is that that Leviticus? Yeah. It is that, Leviticus, uh, yeah. what you okay. said about the Quran being uh, detailed. Leviticus 18 uh, is 30 verses of details of um, covering every single person and relative and what you're, allow what you're not allowed to do. There's more detail in one chapter of Leviticus than the whole Quran. Why didn't the Quran, instead for all those scholars that went into all these disgusting uh, situations, why didn't the Quran detail what you should do with, with uh, each one of the situations like Leviticus does. Uh, that's one point. And uh, the second point I want to make, sister, about Islam. Islam is, like we said, the religion of private parts. Uh, Allah and Muhammad are obsessed with private parts. The word, that term is used in the Quran so many times. And that obsession is the spirit of perversion that goes down to the scholars when they are sitting down discussing each situation, each horrible situation, incestuous situation, even homosexual acts. And they're saying, yes, you can. Yes, you can in big number. Big. Why? I want to ask Muslims, sister, who say, oh, the scholars are bad. Why are all your main Muslim scholars perverts? Sorry to use that word. It's because of the spirit of Islam, the perversion of Islam that seeps through into them because they spend all their time studying Muhammad and Allah. And they're all Muhammad and Allah are obsessed with sex. How do we know? Because the reward, the main reward in paradise, what is it? 
sex, people, it's a uh, hori's private parts. It's all about, it's all about, it's all about that. That's what Islam is all about. And it's a religion of perversion, sister. It is, it is concerning for humanity. Actually, I'll say it's supposed, it also needs to be concerning for people who go to speak school and apparently goes according to gossips, according to gossips, there are Muslims who are, who is got, um, who are practicing homosexuality while they are married with kids. And mm. thanks to teachings of Islam. According to three out of four main schools of thought, that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, they're being faithful Muslim. But oh, I guess my concern is like majority of speakers corner is men. So just men needs to watch out certain things over there. And also Basically, we need to pray for us. Just like touching your chest, touching your face, touching your hair. Just watch out for those kind of signals. Yeah, brothers who go to Speaker's Corner, watch out for yourselves and pray for our sister Hatun who goes there every week to be protected from that because we know the kind of perversion that they follow. I, I, I have Lord Jesus with me. Um, and an ideology is, I'm not saying people are following things. I'm saying an ideology is teaching and talking, yeah, it is quite okay for you to have a sex with two sisters at, at in the same timeline it is all right for you to have a sex with like last week we talked about how it was all right for father to marry with his daughter who become his daughter outside of marriage but still through sex and now we are talking about children boys the ones like you would want to watch in the playground they are singing shouting running around those ch boys who are learning how to cycle or learning how to play football those boys are being played in a sexual sense by someone and the discussion is that someone that person let's call person Muhammad can person Muhammad is allowed to marry this boy who's supposed to play in the playground boys future daughter mm. no one and is saying no one is saying like which prison is the best prison for this man no one is saying, oh, we need to chop his private part. Because, like, you know, when you, when you still think they need to chop your hands off. No one is saying he couldn't control his private part. Let's chop it once for all. No one is saying, keep all the children away from this man. No one is saying, keep every other human beings away from this man. All they are discussing is, there is a possibility this boy... Whom's supposed to play in the playgrounds might have a daughter in the future. Should this man marry or have sex with his daughter, his daughter? And they're not even talking about, oh, he just practiced homosexual act. Let's go and throw them from the highest building. Or someone is practicing something called um um act, act, act of sodom and gomorrah allah destroy them that will happen to you no one is reminding those things all they are thinking about all they are thinking about this guy who played or had sexual relationship with this child should marry with his daughter or not yeah yeah that's my question that is my question i'm not talking about marry at all i'm not talking about lord of lords king of kings logic of cosmos lord jesus christ i'm not talking about that and i am very much disappointed you you've got son and you are quite happy with those teachings 
Uh, and of course, sister, we know that even Muhammad's grandson wasn't uh-huh. safe. Yeah, poor Hassan. If those teach that, that makes sense now why he would suck his tongue and kiss his private parts and to his own grandson because according to the rulings, it's not it's nothing wrong with him. Yeah, and people goes to Muhammad and then say, "Oh, we don't do these things, Muhammad. Why do you do?" Yeah. No one said anything to him. Why is that, sister? Uh, it's just incredible. Where are the Muslims that are usually on the chat defending and defend? They're all silent. Where is your, where is your answer? How, How can, can you, you defend, defend these disgusting things, daughter of Christ? If they can't defend it, why can't I see uh, chat uh, comments saying, I didn't know this was in Islam. This is sick. I'm leaving Islam. Why, I want, why am I not seeing this? I don't know. Why, why do you think, sister? Because I, there is a first step is denial. Second step is denial. Third step is denial. I think it was, um, I will touch it as the time comes on, but um, apparently, actually, no, I, I, I can't mention that, sorry. <laughs> Islam defend Ayaya, your name you're not living up to your name. Because I don't see any defending <laughs> I don't see any defending on the subject. Come on man. Um by the way, sister, um there's a little I wanna say a little tidbit of information. This spirit of perversion uh to the Muslim scholars still lives today. Uh if you're on the Arab channels and you watch any Islamic channels on TV, in the Muslim world, or even online on YouTube, a lot of the Muslim scholars, all they do is sit around, talk about sex, talk about new fatwas on what to do in the bedroom. It's, they're a bunch of perverts. And it's the same perversion that occurred to Muslim scholars, the Qurtubi and others, that is happening today. Even though there is a silence, I just wanted to remind according to Islam, silent means I am okay with this. Memory channel. <laughs> Someone put the name of the channel. Yeah, where is the defense? Where is the defense? Yeah, why would you time you time out Yahya? Because he didn't have answer. But I've I've seen the answers before he's timed out. It's all his usual blasphemy that has nothing to do with the subject. What do you think about the rulings what we talked about? Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's the first time he heard it, sister. That's not acceptable anymore, daughter of Christ. I know it's not acceptable because he's meant to be Islam defender, that's his name, but so how can he be Islam defender if he doesn't know Islam? Bottom line is, there is serious and serious problems with the teachings of Islam when it comes to humanity in any form or any shape, okay? You can, you can have sex with a boy, a man can have sex with a boy, it's not even like woman is having sex with a boy. Man is having sex with a boy. And they are thinking about, ah, what will happen when that child grows up? When that child, that boy, has a daughter? Can the man who had sex with the boy is able to marry him? Her, sorry. Or or let me find the other disturbing one they are all disturbing yeah you shouldn't be allowed to marry anyone you should be in prison let alone people from the same family that he violated the boy thought of christ um i'm very much um, I'm very much, um, what is the word? I'm very much concerned right now, okay? Why on my computer, <laughs> my keyboard is not working very well, but I am very much concerned that um, people um, who are watching 
they will be all sending me their bills for the cleaning of this bucket which they had to throw up <laughs> and in in a sense i'm in a sense yeah. i am concerned that um it will be too much money with all the cleaning and all the, these buckets so um would you like to just summarize uh, this wonderful ideology for us uh yeah um it's, not, it's a not, difficult... sorry, not uh, summarize the Islam for us, but like just what we've done, what we've done tonight. It's a difficult subject. It's it's the tafsir. All we did uh, simply was read the tafsir of the commentary on Surah 423. We, did, we read Qurtubi. Uh, and we got the very disturbing rulings on Islam. Uh, most scholars were talking about whether or not a man can marry with a mother or a daughter of a woman that he fornicated with. And the answer was yes from them and from Muhammad himself, who said that uh, illicit relations don't prohibit marriage. You can basically meaning that a man can have both mother and daughter at some point, which is very disturbing. Uh, and also the same uh, for the mothers of a wife. Again, uh, if done out of wedlock, the man can then go on to marry a woman's daughter after having her and even two sisters together. Um, if they have been um, owned as captives, as, as sex slaves, and we've had a long list of companions of Muhammad saying yes to this. And at the end, which was uh, an the most disturbing, one of the most disturbing for us was if a young boy was violated sexually by a man, that man is allowed to marry the mother of that boy, basically be brought into the household. And that is according to Maliki, Shafi'a and Abu Hanifa, three of the four major schools of thought. And even the the, the fourth school, school of thought that was said it's not allowed, it was actually debating debating whether that man should be then should then marry the daughter of the of the little boy that he violated later on without any mention of punishments um, or any rebuke of that which is just shows the dismal the dismal moral compass the dismal morality of Islam Islam is morally corrupt it is morally corrupt this semi incestuous allows these semi incestuous relationships to happen things that God would never allow and God would never be happy with. And uh, we, we talked about Leviticus 18, which sets the, the, the standard for holiness, a long list of uh, relatives and even your neighbor, whom you're not allowed to touch under any circumstance because God is holy. And he, he, says, he says in Leviticus, because I am the Lord. So even though Islam pretends or claims that it has... Uh, morality. It has a veneer of morality. You you dig a little deeper and you find all this perversion, uh, sister. And it was this was practiced. A lot of these scenarios were practiced at the time of the golden era of Islam, the time of the companions of Muhammad, the ones that Muslims look up to so much. This is where we meant to take Islam from, and it's sickening. So I ask any Muslims listening today. We, ha we haven't heard any defense, and there is really no defense, to be honest. I ask them to leave this sister, this cesspool of immorality and, and, and just, uh, I, have, I have no words. <laughs> just leave it, because you have no excuse now. You've heard this and come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Go on. Last week, you could marry with your son or your daughter who was born outside of the marriage because Islam doesn't even accept that as a marriage or because you are not accepted as like a real child. And now the people who you can marry, the people who you can have sex, when you look at that list, it is more than disgusting and it in every form and every shape. Even though if you try to twist it, even if you try to put some jelly on it, even if you try to put some ice cream on it, whatever you want to put on it, it still goes against the teachings 
of the Bible which Quran comes to co confirm. It's not only that I don't have much expectation on the Quran, but I do have I do have concerns for people who follow the, this ideology. I did tell earlier that I know an ex-Muslim, she learned Surah Fatiha while her father was having sex with her. And it has been practiced, that is the concern. And I'm just nobody who concerns and I know my God who concern for this broken world. Father sends his son to this broken world so that people can turn to God instead of running away from God. And it breaks these stupid teachings, disgusting teachings, disturbing teachings, all those like the words which you could use. Uh, the breaks heart of my God. That's the that is the concern, and it becomes double concerning when you see a Muslims in the chat, and they simply silent about it. They are silent when a man thinks it's all right to take the child's right. Take the right of a boy who's supposed to be in the playground and have sex with that child. It is silent when people think it's all right that a man can marry with his daughter. It is concerning when there is a silent, when the discussions are taking place. Oh, should you be able to marry with the boy boy's mother who you just had a sex with a boy because in Islam silent is coming alongside of it and those things are very much concerning and concerning and concerning but with all those as I said it is the broken world it is the sinful human beings but it is King of Kings, eternal Son of God, gives solution to this sinful human solution to this broken world. Not Muhammad, not your sheikhs, not your schools. It is Lord Jesus Christ, eternal Son of God, gives solution, and solution is comes through his death and his resurrection. It breaks heart of my God when simply Muslims need to be running away from such a disgusting teachings. They simply stay in it and stay in it. You cannot hide away from those discussions. You cannot simply be silent around those discussions. Your religion is teaching. It's been practiced. It goes against the Torah. It goes against the Old Testament and the New Testament. But you choose to be silent about it. Not only you choose to be silent about it, you choose to ignore it and attack the Christian scripture. That is the beauty of mindset islam gives the humanity that is the beauty of mindset islam gives to humanity i think this will be just time as you call i don't know if you've got if you live in england you will probably be calling cleaning lady to come and clean the buckets tomorrow or the cleaning lady to come and clean the carpet which you drop on it but let's remember something let's remember this Is a false god, a false god, a false god. Allah is a false god, a false, false god. 
a prophet. Muhammad is not a prophet. If you want grace and mercy and love, Islam is not for you. But Jesus is the way, the truth, the way, the truth and the life. Jesus is the King of kings who died to save us all. If you just repent and believe he took your sins on the cross, then mercy and grace, forgiveness and love, eternity can be yours. But Allah is a false God, a false God, a false God. Allah is a false God, a false, false God. If you want grace and mercy and love, Islam is not for you. But Jesus is the way truth the way the truth and the life jesus is the king of kings who died to save us all if you just repent and believe he took your sins on the cross then mercy and grace forgiveness and love eternity can be yours thought of christ yeah um Thank you very much for joining us tonight and helping us to think through more reasons why Islam is dangerous for humanity and how disgusting its teachings. You're welcome. And also, thank you very much to those of you who joined us in chat. Uh, I love to, if you really, really need someone to pay your cleaning bills, uh, you can find me at Speakers Corner on Sunday. Um, but before before um, all those things, um, huge thank you to admin in the chat. And thanks for joining us all and taking part in the conversation. And thank you to Muslims for choosing to be silent. Because on the day of judgment, when you try to hide yourself from the wrath of the Lamb, by calling out the mountains and by calling out the rocks to hide you, you will be needing your voice in that day. Um, until we see you next, um, may my risen Lord silent you with his love. And those of you who doesn't know my risen Lord, may he bring you to himself. God bless you all.